In order to understand and work with identity and access management policies, we need to understand the policy elements that are going to make up and construct the actual insides of our policy themselves. Some of these are gonna be required. You'll see them in all of our policies or some flavor of them. Others are gonna be optional and administrators can use them just when they need to create that specific desired effect. Over here in my text editor, I've got an identity and access management policy opened up and I've got it collapsed down so we can see just the three top level elements. The first one in there is version. Now this version number that they're calling out here is actually the syntax version. Uh, so kind of the version of the language that we're using within the identity and access management policy. After that, you have an ID. This is used differently depending on the services that are creating the policies or administering the policies. In your organization, if you wanna take advantage of the ID field, we would recommend using a GUID uh, and programmatically generating that. And then after that, we get down into the statement itself. Moving on down in, we see the statement ID. This is a way of identifying the statement itself within the policy. Certain services like the queuing or notification service have uh, specific expectations on how that is populated. After that, you have the principal, and this simply refers to who this particular statement should refer to using Amazon resource notation naming. You can see they're pointing to this particular account and the root user within that account. Beyond that, you will have actions that are referenced, okay? And then it's gonna call out the specific service and API calls that this statement uh, references. Moving on in, you have an effect. This further modifies that action, whether it's going to be a deny those actions or allow those actions. And then as you move on down, you get to resource. This refers to the specific resources that this statement refers to. Now in this one, you can see them referring to a bucket and then also referring to the contents of that bucket, again, using Amazon resource naming structure. And we'll be looking at ARN structure a lot more in future lessons. Moving on down then, you have condition, which is an optional field that allows us to define criteria in which this particular statement uh, should apply. So keep in mind, friends, that that principle, action, the effect, the resource, and then some of those other optional fields all work together to define who, what, where, and when this particular policy should take effect. See you next time. Thank you.